44 Days of Hell The Murder Story of Junko Furuta Junko Furuta was 17 years old when she was raped, beaten, and murdered by four teenage boys in Japan in the 1980s. Shinji Minato's parents considered Junko Furuta to be their son's girlfriend. The lovely young lady spent so much time with their son that it appeared as if she was living in their house. Even when they began to suspect that her constant presence wasn't always voluntary, they continued to believe that everything was fine. After all, they were concerned about their son's violent tendencies and his friend's ties to the Yakuza, Japan's most powerful organized crime syndicate. But for Shinji Minato and his friends, Hiroshi Miyano, Jay Ogura, and Yasushi Watanabe, Junko Furuta was their prisoner, sex slave, and punching bag for 44 days straight. Tragically, she would become their murder victim on her final day of horrific torture. The Abduction of Junko Furuta Junko Furuta was born in 1971 in Misato, Japan. She was a normal teenager until she was abducted at the age of 17. At Yashio Minami High School, Furuta was known for her beauty, intelligence, and good grades. Despite her good girl reputation, she didn't drink, smoke, or use drugs. She was quite popular at school and appeared to have a promising future. Everything changed in November 1988, however. At the time, Hiroshi Miyano, her future kidnapper, was well known as the school bully and frequently boasted about his connections to the Yakuza. Some of their classmates claimed that Miyano had developed a slight crush on Furuta and was furious when she rejected him. Given that he had told them about his Yakuza friends, nobody had ever dared to reject him. A few days later, Miyano and Minato were prowling a park in Misato, preying on defenseless women. Miyano and Minato were experts at spotting potential victims because they were seasoned gang rapists. The boys saw Junko Furuta riding her bicycle around 8.30 p.m. She was traveling home from work at the time. Minato knocked Furuta off her bike, causing a distraction, which at that point, Miyano stepped in, pretending to be an innocent and concerned bystander. After assisting her, he asked if she wanted an escort home, which Furuta unwittingly agreed to. She never saw her loved ones again. Miyano led Furuta to an abandoned warehouse, where he told her of his Yakuza connections, raped her, and threatened to kill her and her family if she made a sound. He then led her to a park, where Minato, Ogura, and Watanabe awaited. The other boys raped her there as well. They then smuggled her into a house belonging to Minato's family. Despite the fact that Furuta's parents reported her missing to the police, the boys made sure they didn't go looking for her, forcing her to call home and say she had run away and was staying with a friend. Furuta was forced to pose as Minato's girlfriend whenever his parents were present, though they eventually realized something wasn't right. When they weren't raping her, the boys made her do things like eat live cockroaches, masturbate in front of them, and drink her own urine. Her body was hung from the ceiling and beaten with golf clubs, bamboo sticks, and iron rods while she was still alive. Cigarettes, lighters, and hot wax were used to burn her eyelids and genitals. The torture got even worse and continued until Furuta died. The Murder of Junko Furuta one of the most tragic things about Junko Furuta's agonizing torture and eventual murder is that it all could have been prevented. The police were alerted to Furuta's condition twice, but neither time did they intervene. The first time, a boy who had been invited to Minato's house by Miyano returned home after seeing Furuta and informed his brother about what was going on. The brother then told his parents, who called the police. When the authorities arrived at the Minato home, the family assured them that there was no girl inside. 
The police were clearly satisfied with the response as they never returned to the house. Junko Furuta's captors finally murdered her on January 4, 1989. When she allegedly beat them at Mahjong, the boys became enraged and tortured her to death. In order to avoid being accused of murder, they placed her body in a 55-gallon drum, filled it with concrete, and then dropped it onto a cement truck. For a while, they believed they would never be caught. The Aftermath of a Heinous Crime Two weeks later, the police arrested Miyano and Ogura on a separate gang rape charge. During Miyano's interrogation, the police mentioned an open murder investigation. Believing the authorities were referring to the murder of Junko Furuta and that Ogura must have confessed to the crime, Miyano told the police where they could find Furuta's body. In the end, the case that the police were referring to had nothing to do with Furuta and Miyano had unwittingly turned himself in for her murder. Within a few days, all four boys were apprehended. Despite the mountain of evidence against them and their heinous torture of Junko Furuta, the boys received shockingly light sentences. Hiroshi Miyano was sentenced to 20 years. Shinji Minato received a term of five to nine years. Joe Ogura was sentenced to five to 10 years and Yasushi Watanabe received a term of five to seven years. Because they were teenagers at the time of Junko Furuta's murder, their youth was linked to their light sentences, though it is widely assumed that their ties to the Yakuza also played a role. If the case had been heard elsewhere, or if the boys had been just a few years older, they would almost certainly have received the death penalty. Instead, all four of Furuta's murderers were eventually released. Watanabe is believed to be the only one who has not reoffended since his release. Many people in Japan still believe that justice was not served in Furuta's case. Tragically, it does not appear that this will ever happen. Drop a comment below and let us know what you think. If you enjoy this content, then please give this video a like and hit the subscribe button.